so today we are going to be um, spending uh, our entire time using just standard jump. You might see that uh, I'm running Jump Pro. Um, that's just because I have it. Uh, so, but everything that we're going to be doing, you can do in standard jump today. And that being said, I want to sort of uh, take a second and just uh, kind of go over where we're going to spend our time today. Basically, everything that we'll do is in this data access tab. I'm going to delve just a little bit into automation and scripting. But for the most part, it's this data access and very specifically Today, we're talking about getting information from databases into Jump. Uh, so that being said, I want to start with just a little, a, a little business problem that most people probably have. Um, imagine that I'm at uh, a company, we'll call it Red Triangle Industries, and you've got a, a process, uh, a big machine that mixes things together and spits something out. And it has five process inputs that are kind of interrelated and you know like 99 percent of the time there's never a problem with it but when there is a problem with it um, it ends up costing millions of dollars if we don't catch it the good news is this process writes to a database and so as a business what we need is just some simple tool to kind of go back and look at maybe the last uh 200 250 runs and then see if the things are out of control. And so I've got this workflow that I recorded and I'm just gonna hit play here. And this is gonna go to a database that I have running on my computer. It's gonna grab those last 250 runs from the database and squish all of those process uh, inputs into uh, one control chart. I can look immediately and see that this, this last data point is under the red line and I am done. So literally, um, within just a few seconds each day, I can run this, nothing to see here, go back to my daily work, and life is good. Now, we will get back to this, and we will, we will build this today. Uh, but, uh, but first, we need to kind of go uh, lots of different directions and have a lot more fun. So at the very end, we're going to talk about and build that, that same process check. I'm going to be using a, a popular database called Chinook. And, and this is outside of the scope today, but I put a couple of hints on how to create it. Uh, if you have something like SQL Server Management Studio, uh, and, and you can do this all for free on your computer. So if you need to recreate things, um, just know that uh, if you download this journal afterwards, if you see a little uh, no icon, it's probably not going to work on your computer because it's uh, focused on a database on my computer. But if you, you see the gear icon, you once you set up that Chinook database, you should be able to run these uh, same scripts. So you should be able to recreate most everything today. I want to talk a little bit about uh, connecting to a database. And if we click this link right here, Jump can connect to just about any data source you have. And as I scroll down this list, you might you might notice this ODBC showing up quite a bit. Uh, so this is a, uh, ODBC is a um, sort of a catch-all way for things to connect to databases. And there's a huge list, uh, and, and really it comes down to if you have an ODBC compliant database, you can definitely connect to it with Jump. Uh, other databases, probably, but your best bet is ODBC. And the way that you do that is uh, fairly simple. I'll show you maybe two things to think about. So first off, uh, I'm going to open, uh, and this works for Windows. There's something similar to an ODBC data sources in Mac. I would just type ODBC in my start menu and then click on it. Uh, I can see a list of all of the databases that I have connected. I'm going to remove this one, Chinook, and I'll, and I'll recreate it. So am I sure? Yes. I, uh, I'm going to be brave and just do it. I hit the add button. Sorry, it looks like my other monitor is the primary, so I'm just dragging things off of that. And this, depending on on how uh, what your server is, you may you may need to download a driver. You may need to get a, a cheat sheet from your IT slash database database administrator. But probably eighty or to ninety percent of the time, it'll just be the SQL Server one. Uh, so you give it a name. I will type Chinook here. Uh, and then this is probably the only difficult part. It's difficult for me because I can never remember the address 
where I installed this database on my computer. So that I just copied and pasted that in there. Once you do that, um, you can be tempted to just hit next, 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 finish. But there is one thing that you probably want to change, and that is change the default database to the specific database you're trying to connect to. Most servers will have multiple databases on them. So I'm going to select this Chinook, uh, and I finish. It's a bunch of stuff to ignore, but don't ignore this test button. And when you click on it, you get this nice test completed successfully. And that's it. Now, if that seems too complicated, there is wonderful news starting in Jump 18. And that wonderful news is only one person in your organization needs to go through that. And once you've done that, once one person with Jump has built that connection, then there's this data connectors menu. And um, among other things, so I can, I can create new connections uh, or I can connect to this Chinook that I just made a connection to via the ODBC manager. I can connect to things. I can um, open specific tables and go straight to the query builder. And we'll get to that in a second. But uh, this little red triangle up here is really awesome because it allows you to share connections. So, uh, you know, let's say, I, you know, I work at the Red Triangle Industries and we have uh, an AdventureWorks database. We have an Amazon database on the internet. We have this Chinook database that, that we'll be using today. Uh, I've got another, I don't even remember where this is, but I know it's on the internet. And I can give this a name, Red Triangle DB Connections. And when I hit the Save button, I can put that maybe on my desktop. And when I hit save here, a, a little pop-up will show up. And that pop-up is really nice because it, your IT security people will thank, will thank you for thinking about this. Hey, do you want to include the password? Oh, heck no, I don't. I don't want to get in trouble for sharing a password. So it gives you the option. Uh, and you can always, uh, uh, I mean, I suppose you could save that, the passwords. But anyway, now I can go to my desktop where I saved this, and this is a jump add-in. So you can put this somewhere, maybe on a network shared folder or um, a, a, some shared space for all new employees. And then when a new employee comes in, all they have to do is double click this and they can install that and they will have access to all of these. I'm not gonna install it uh, because I, I'm, I was the one that already had them. Then they would have all of those connections. So that's super, super easy and gonna save a ton of hassle one downfall of ODBC connections is if you name them something different, like I know there are two ways to spell Chinook, one with an H in the middle and one without. Yeah, that, that could create problems. So sharing it, standardizing it, one source of truth, life is good there. Uh, so uh, we can uh, pretty easily create a connection to a database and even easier now, we can share those database connections with others, which means we can actually start to get data from, uh, from a database. 